everyone. Welcome to the State Department. Happy Tuesday. And I'll take your questions. I don't have anything at the top, so please go ahead and I'll go with you first, sir. Yeah, sure. Um, the Iraq's Parliament approved, uh, Prime Minister, uh, about these uh, wide-ranging reforms. Um, how much did the United States know about these reforms? And um, are there any sort of red lines? Because there seems to be some concern that if the reforms go too far, they could alienate the Sunnis in the political process. If you could comment on that. Well, um, uh, first, uh, in, in terms of the reforms, we certainly applaud the unity that was shown by uh, Iraqi leaders from across the political spectrum uh, in moving forward on Prime Minister Abadi's proposals. Uh, which, as you know, were uh, aimed at streamlining the government and addressing corruption. Uh, and we note that these, uh, these measures were uh, unanimously uh, approved by the Council of Ministries, uh, Ministers rather, earlier today. Uh, um, so we certainly commend uh, Prime Minister Abadi's initiative uh, to promote improved transparency and government services. And this is certainly something he pledged when he came into to power uh, to govern more inclusively. Uh, so we uh, certainly uh, believe uh, that he's doing so through these uh, measures that were adopted and uh, expect he'll continue to do so. There were, there were specific people on the list, including former Prime Minister Maliki, who was removed. Uh, do you share Mr. Abadi's concern or uh, Mr. Abadi's position that those people are corrupt people that had to be removed? Well. First of all, I, I think the efforts were designed, as I said, to, to streamline the government. Uh, those are obviously, uh, this is an internal uh, uh, issue for the Iraqi government. Uh, what we're looking at, the bigger picture, is, uh, as I said, is his efforts to uh, govern more inclusively, and we think that uh, these uh, measures, uh, as adopted, uh, will do that. Um, uh, but, but you, you uh, don't have any issue with those specific people who have been fired, basically, or removed from power? Again, I, I, I think I spoke to what we're looking for here, more inclusive governance, uh, more streamlined uh, um, process, uh, better transparency, and certainly, as you mentioned, uh, one of the goals is to fight corruption, but I'm not going to speak to uh, individuals. I'm just going to say that as a matter of uh, a broader uh, concern uh, to us. Please can go I ahead, move on to, Can I move on to Syria? Are we done with Iraq? Great. Um, I mean, you know, there's been a lot of talk about, you know, the rebel forces and them being captured and, and just not, you know, being able to stand up. I mean, could you talk a little bit about what you think needs to be done to get a credible rebel force on the ground in Syria to fight ISIS? I mean, you, now the U.S. believes five of the six rebels it trained and equipped have been captured, so mm, they're under constant attack. What needs to be done? Well, look, uh, and many... Uh, People uh, from the Department of Defense, from the Pentagon, uh, people more with more expertise than I have uh, on this matter have spoken to this issue, and I think recognizing that uh, that this has been uh, a difficult uh, process uh, to vet these people, to train them, to get them back into what is a very fluid, dynamic uh, uh, situation, um, where, as we all know from last week, uh, you know they're under threat from a variety of forces. They're not just uh, there to, I mean, they're there to attack and take the fight to ISIL, but they're under threat from other uh, groups and entities in that region. Uh, so it's a very fluid, very difficult situation. It remains a challenge. Um, that said, uh, we're committed to building the capacity of the moderate Syrian opposition, and we remain uh, dedicated to that. But, um, you know, we need to, we, and sorry, just to finish, but, and, you know, we obviously, as you noted in your question, we need to grow the capacity. We need more people going through the pipeline and getting out to the field. Do you anticipate working more with the YPG Kurds since, you know, the train and equip uh, rebels that you have have virtually evaporated as a force? Well, I, I think, you know, and we've talked somewhat about this, you know, part of the reason when we've reached this agreement with Turkey uh, to use Inchilik is not just the, the YPG, the Kurds there, but there's Turkmen, there's um, Syrian Arabs as well. And these have been effective fighting forces as well against ISIL. So certainly we support their efforts to clean that region out uh, and to, you know, push ISIL out from northern so, Syria. So you Go ahead. anticipate more collaboration? I, I, I don't know if I want to say more, uh, just to say we're going to maintain that. I mean, that's obviously behind the, uh, the uh, agreement that we have with Turkey, which is, and again, I'm not... I mean, the, the YPD have been very uh, efficient, but it's not just them. It's the, it's the Turkmen, it's the, the Arabs as well. 
Yeah, uh, the uh, Deputy uh, Foreign Minister of Turkey is saying that the U.S. and Turkey have reached an official agreement on establishing a safe zone, safe area, whatever language you want to call it, in northwestern Syria. Is that true, that there is a so-called safe zone or safe area that has been officially designated for fighting ISIL? Sure. Um, what what we our understanding is, is that Turkey's granted the United States expanded access to Turkish uh, facilities to enhance air operations against ISIL. Um, we've been pretty clear from the podium and elsewhere saying there's no zone, uh, no safe haven. We're not talking about that here. What we're talking about is a sustained effort to drive ISIL out of the region. So, uh, you so we, we've been very careful about not to put monikers or, or descriptive uh, adjectives on how are describing what this area is going to look like, except to say we're, our effort is focused on driving ISIL out of the region. But are you confirming or denying that there is an official agreement on a certain amount of territory inside Syria where the coalition with Turkey's help is going to be going after ISIL? I, I think I would just say, you know, again, we've agreed on um, using Turkish facilities uh, to enhance our air operations against ISIL, and that those efforts will continue. And then beyond that, we remain in discussion with Turkey about, uh, and that includes evaluating options on how to, uh, you know, and more effective means to counter ISIL in the region. The but again, we're trying to. Right, like right, you're I'm sorry, Elise. I'm not. I'm just. Uh, I'm just. Uh, I'm not going to characterize it as a safe haven or a, or a, or an anti-ISIL yeah, zone. Well, well, the uh, Rocky, well, the deputy uh, foreign minister is also claiming that as part of this agreement, which it sounds as if the U.S. has not officially reached, that the U.S. has agreed to attack not just ISIL fighters within this area, but also attack any Kurdish fighters who are in that area, ostensibly because the Turks consider the Kurds. Again, I haven't seen those threat. remarks. We've been clear uh, of when talking about the PKK that they are an FTO, a foreign terrorist organization. Uh, and we support uh, Turkey's right to self-defense against them. Uh, that's separate and apart from our anti-ISIL efforts in the region. Is it helpful to have? Is it helpful to have officials in the Turkish government making these kinds of claims and saying that Washington has signed off on actions that uh, clearly are what the Turkish government would want to achieve? Well, look, I, I haven't actually, I haven't seen the actual remarks. I'm just telling you what what our understanding is here, which is that we have an agreement to use Turkish facilities to enhance our air operations against ISIL on the ground. We are ongoing discussions about other measures or efforts that we can take to to help uh, take the fight to ISIL and clear that zone. Go ahead, just on, on the Turkish claim that the Please. U.S. would engage in any activity against PKK. You would not. Sorry, one more time. The mil, uh, yeah, on the, the Turkish claim, claim about U.S. military, potential U.S. military activity against PKK. The U.S. would not be engaged in. Our any, focus is on ISIL. And you do not have any uh, congressional authorization. Uh, there is no authorization for the use of military force against the PKK. Not that I'm aware of. No. Um, and I just wanted to follow up. on yesterday, we sure. asked a couple times about Mazen Darwish, uh, since the U.S. put a lot of. Uh, Great calls into his release, and now he has some level of uh, of a release. Uh, do you have a response to this action by the Syrian government about his release? Yes. Um, uh, good question. Let me. Uh, I, I think we do have some kind of comment. I'll, I'll get back to okay. that. Sorry, Brad. A quick one on Iran deal. Please. Yeah. Can I ask one more? Yeah, sure. Let's finish up, and then so, we go to you. Uh, yes. So, are you saying that there is because according to the deputy Turkish foreign minister? there's actually going to be a zone where the PYD is not allowed to be in. So are you saying there is there is no zone that is banned for the PYD in northern Syria? Everywhere they can go on, they can go after ISIS everywhere they want. So what we PYD. Again, what we're, I, no, no, there's no agreement on some kind of zone. What we've talked about and what we've agreed on uh, is, uh, is, as I said, using uh, Turkish facilities, take the fight against ISIL in northern Syria, clear that area with, and we talked a lot about this, with, you know, bringing in, uh, bringing back, rather, with the goal of bringing back, rather, uh, local government, local autonomous governments, uh, and those refugees who want to return can return. So, you know, we're trying to, um, you know, get ISIL out of the picture and then, you know, reestablish uh, 
you know, for those refugees who want to return, uh, reestablish uh, a secure environment for them to do so. Um, on the Iran deal, Secretary Kerry just said something like warning that um, if the Congress rejects the deal, that there's a danger that the U.S. could um, lose its the dollar as the reserve currency around the world. And I'm just wondering where that um, uh, charge would come from. Like, are you hearing that from Treasury analysts, or like, where does that, where was that? Coming? Yeah, that's. Um, I, you know what? I'm sorry. I, I, I'm. You're talking about from his. Uh, his uh, I talk think it's an argument that Iran. I've heard the president, from the, and the secretary, the and secretary orders. Lou make, but yeah. I just don't know where that's. Yeah, I, I would have to check on that. Okay. I, I apologize. Uh, I, I don't have that uh, in front of me. Yeah. Yep. Well, sure. Um, the secretary makes the argument that if Congress votes down the deal, there would be no inspections. I thought that inspections long predated um, the Iran deal. Maybe not at the level you hope to have them at, but they are an NPT member and an IAEA member, and they've had inspections in Iran forever, I think. Is that not right? Well, again, um, <coughs> you're right to note that the level of inspections would be a lot less. Uh, my understanding, though, is that there would be, uh, just as the Secretary said, that you know, uh, if we didn't enact this deal, uh, that we won't have, again, the, the unprecedented level of inspections okay. on Iran. So it's the unpre And then the other thing that uh, I was a little confused by was um, this notion that not just he but others have made that if Congress votes down the deal, Iran wouldn't be uh, subject to restrictions on its nuclear program. So are they no longer subject to any restrictions from the United Nations? Are those all vanished now that this deal takes its place? Well, um, again, um, and we he's talked a lot about this, as of others, um, uh, you know, the sanctioned regime uh, would potentially unravel um, mm -hmm. and collapse. Um, and so then Iran could pursue its nuclear program uh, unconstrained, and it's already, as we've talked about, a threshold state uh, in terms of nuclear uh, capabilities or um, obtaining a nuclear weapon. Uh, so, you know, again, the deal would keep that, those sanctions in place, and then until or as uh, Iran complies with the deal, then there's sanctions, some sanctions relief would come into effect. So when he's talking about unconstrained, he's talking about it in the sense of pressure, not in a legal sense, because they would, they would still be legally prevented from getting a nuclear weapon as a member of the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty, as a member of uh, I, I'd have to check on that, but I, I, I think... Uh, I, 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 I know that they, um, you know, that the, the sanctioned regime would be considerably weakened. Okay. Yeah. Because, you know, there would be no, you know, I mean, we'd be left with unilateral sanctions against them. And, and you know, frankly, the, the rest of the world, as we've talked about many times, would, uh, in, in the absence of a deal, uh, right, the, but the very strong multilateral or UN sanctions we put in place. But you could also snap those sanctions back at the UN. The SNAP Act does remain, yes, that's right. So in theory, punishments are, you, you have the ability to put constraints on Iran's nuclear program and on Iran's economy if you so choose, deal or no deal. Well, again, with the deal, with no deal, again, we would lose uh, the credibility that we would have built up. We would lose our P5 partners. Uh, and, and their willingness to uh, enact a deal and to keep the uh, the pressure on Iran until it complies, obviously, with the IAEA and uh, and, and grants the access we need. So, I mean, you know, I, I think the uh, the concern here is that without a deal, all of that falls to the wayside. A new topic, please. Yeah, please. On Afghanistan, following up your remarks from this podium yesterday, um, has anyone from the State Department reached out to Pakistan also for, for reducing tensions between the two countries? You're talking about between Afghanistan, Pakistan and, and Pakistan. Afghanistan. Yes, yes. Um, you know, we're in constant contact. I don't have anything new to, to report or to say. Uh, do, you, do you agree with the Afghanistan's uh, statements that the terrorist attacks were from across the border, from safe events across the border? You're talking about the terrorist attacks over the weekend? In, yeah, in, the, in Kabul. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't have any other information to share about that. Um, you know, uh, but obviously we condemn those attacks. Please, go ahead. The follow up on that. Uh, yesterday, um, we were told that um, there was a phone call with the Afghan president, but uh, Pakistan was mentioned in the statement. So was uh, 
anybody from this building or from the U.S. administration did speak to anybody in Pakistan counterparts or the podium was used to tell them that, you know, get your act together? Um, I'm not aware of any, uh, certainly any, uh, any calls at the, uh, at the secretary's level. As you noted, he did talk to the uh, Afghan president, uh, again, to express our deep uh, condolences at the tragedies over the weekend. Um, uh, but uh, we, pl we, we are in constant contact with the Pakistani government and, uh, um, and express our concerns on a variety of things, including uh, counterterrorism. But I had also asked yesterday about uh, that um, uh, such statements from this podium have been, uh, you know, uh, released, and it's been seven years since the Mumbai attacks, and six Americans died. What Pakistan has done, and we, we are we just going to just? Uh, is there something be that we don't know that's going on? What what is? Well, I mean. You're talking about Mumbai specifically. Yes. I mean, we've been very clear. President Obama has spoken to this. Uh, you know that we want to see the Mumbai uh, perpetrators, the financiers, uh, the the sponsors uh, held accountable for their crimes. Uh, we continue to follow the criminal proceedings closely, and we urge uh, additional acts, actions uh, to prevent such an attack from ever happening again. Is the U.S. assisting Afghanistan in uh, chasing all figures behind these attacks? Uh, I'm not aware that we're uh, we're assisting them in, in the investigations, uh, but uh, you know certainly uh, we're providing you know security uh, assistance to them. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, but I'm not aware of anything specific in, in terms of these investigations. In view of these series of attacks in Kabul over the last one week, uh, mm -hmm. uh, what's the level of security of the U.S. embassy in Kabul? Well, we don't uh, speak uh, to our uh, security posture, uh, but I mean, you know, look, it's a, you know, these have been attacks in and around uh, Kabul. Um, uh, it's uh, there's been, uh, as I think we noted yesterday, a, a rise in civilian casualties. So certainly, you know, it's a very, uh, uh, you know, a very sensitive security environment. So we take uh, precautions as needed. Thank you. Can we talk about Guantanamo? Sure, but. In the back, sure. sorry. Sorry, Mark, I'll get back to What is your here. reaction to reports that investigators in the MH17 crash may have found what are Russian fragments from Russian surface to air missiles? Um, first of all, what's your reaction? And secondly, if this is indeed the case, how might the it affect U.S. reaction? Would the U.S. look at exerting any additional pressure on Russia for its role in Ukraine? I mean, we've been, you know, very clear about our assessment since really uh, uh, immediately following this terrible tragedy, uh, and that is that the MH17, uh, uh, we believe, was shot down by a surface-to-air missiles fired by, uh, or fired from, rather, separatist-controlled territory in eastern Ukraine. Uh, we obviously continue to support efforts to bring those responsible, uh, um, to hold them accountable. Uh, for the deaths of uh, 298 passengers and crew. Um, I'm aware of the reports that you mentioned earlier today. We certainly support the Dutch investigation. Um, uh, I know that the National Transportation Safety Board is participating in that investigation, uh, but, you know, uh, our assessment hasn't changed. Uh, we still believe this was uh, the, the work of uh, Russian-backed separatists. Please. Can I go back to Syria? Sure thing. So earlier today, Foreign Minister Lavrov uh, said he was concerned about this focus on removing Assad. He said removing him militarily would mean a power grab by Islamic State militants. Do you share these concerns? What are your thoughts? Um, he said, I'm sorry, he said he, it he was said uh, removing Assad militarily would mean a power grab by Islamic State militants. Well, um, I, I, again, um, there's really, uh, it's a very complex situation, as I've said multiple times, uh, security-wise in, in, uh, in Syria. Um, you know, but just trying to compartmentalize here. <laughs> you know, there's, what, what Assad's doing uh, is uh, reprehensible. He's created the conditions, as we've said many times, uh, that have led to this kind of lawlessness and uh, statelessness that has led to the growth of uh, groups like ISIL. Um, we need to see a political resolution to that. Uh, but we've been also been very clear that we don't believe that can uh, involve Assad. Uh, but we want to see a moderate Syrian opposition emerge, uh, and we want to see a political process emerge uh, according to the Geneva communique. So that's one aspect of it. 
The other side of this is our anti-ISIL fight. Um, and we're, as I said, working with Turkey, but obviously with all, all the other coalition members uh, to, uh, through airstrikes and through support for these uh, groups fighting on the ground uh, to really uh, help dislodge and destroy uh, ISIL. Well, you would, uh, if, if, if it was possible, but, you would support the moderate opposition, however indirectly, in overthrowing Assad if need be militarily. I mean, you what would. We've, what we've said is we want to see a political solution in, in, uh, in, uh, in, in a resolution to the crisis in Syria. Would the U.S. ruling out any Sorry. sort of military intervention to uh, have Assad leave power? Is that just off the table? You mean by us or by whoever? By uh, whomever. I mean, for, you know, look, we've been very clear. Uh, we've been very clear. We support uh, the UN process. Dimastura uh, uh, is leading that process. Uh, we want to see a political resolution in accordance with Geneva. Yes. Regarding the political solution, I mean, yes. this term is repeatedly said in, from this podium. Yes. What are the components of this political solution from your perspective? I'm not listening sure. to other narrative, whether it's Russian or Syrian or any other country. Well, I think what we, you know, what we, what I just uh, mentioned was, uh, uh, you know, there's a UN-led effort here. Uh, Dima Stewart just briefed on this, I think, a couple of weeks ago. Uh, we certainly support, uh, you know, the establishment of working groups to look at all the different elements to a, a political resolution. Um, we need to, uh, or we don't, uh, but the Syrian opposition, moderate opposition, needs to uh, solidify, coalesce, come together, uh, and become uh, a governing force. And then we can see a political process, as I said, consistent with Geneva Communique that we're agreed on, uh, um, take place. Um, but uh, again, we don't believe that uh, Assad can be a part of that, uh, just based on you know the terrible horror that he's wrought on his country over the past uh, five years. Correct me if I'm wrong, yes. for a while you were looking for it, it was said that U.S. is supporting a kind of transitional period led by Assad or somebody else from this or, or, uh, the Well, I system. think what we've said is we don't see a political solution that involves Assad. Uh, so I'll leave it at that. So, and, and uh, the other question, it seems that yesterday uh, Secretary Kerry uh, talked to Egyptian uh, Foreign Minister Samah Shokri. That's right. Uh, uh, I'm not sure it, it was mentioned in Egypt that he talked about sure, it was Egypt. yesterday. Yeah, about and he talked about Syria and political solution. Meanwhile, he received another call from Lavrov. So, what do you expect? I mean, you had the chance. The secretary had the chance to meet Lavrov and uh, Joubert in Doha, and then after that, he met Lavrov in Asia. Well, what you are trying to do? I mean, yesterday it was kind of. The question was raised, but there was it, the questions were not answered. So you have what we're trying to do. Well, again, I'm you know, and I've said this many times from over the last week. Um, uh, you know, we don't want to get ahead of uh, of the process here. Uh, you're right. The secretary uh, has been in conversations. There was the the meeting in Doha with Lavrov, and I think uh, the Saudi uh, Foreign, Foreign Minister, Minister Joubert. Um, they did also meet in um, in Asia, and. Um, uh, you know, we uh, so we've been having these ongoing conversations uh, um, on you know basically recognizing the urgency to move forward uh, in a genuine, sustainable uh, political transition in Syria. But as to the specifics or what might happen next, I'm not going to get ahead of the process. So and our, I would add that our special uh, representative, <laughs> or envoy. Uh, Michael Ratney is still traveling around the, the region as well, holding meetings. So another question Please. related to the, the, the frequently asked the yep. question about the buffer zone, security zone, and what was coming out of uh, Ankara right. regarding this proposal or whatever you can call it, uh, a plan. Uh, you are saying there is nothing like that on the table. I mean... Again... Um, Sorry, just to clarify, um, you know, what we're doing in Turkey, or with Turkey, rather, um, this is a 37-odd member coalition uh, against ISIL. Uh, cer certainly, we're welcoming greater Turkish participation. Uh, our agreement with them is to use their facilities, uh, namely Interlake, but, you know, to, but to, to increase our ability to strike ISIL uh, in northern Syria. Um, 
I just, we've been very careful to shy away from saying we're creating some kind of zone. Uh, our ultimate goal is to degrade, destroy ISIL and drive them out of that region. But if you, I, I would rather put in a question form. If, sure. if, if something, and if, of course, if I will, sure. I, I will avoid if because becoming hypothetical. <laughs> <You're> <laughs> it's, the question is whether or not t Turkey re re created that status quo. Are you going to oppose it or just accept it as a reality? Again, that's a question for uh, for the Turkish authorities. Uh, you're saying if they if they create what some kind of uh, kind of I mean, let's say this is our zone to work in it. You know, we're getting uh, we're getting ahead of, of what's actually happening here. With the cooperation, the level of cooperation that we have with Turkey is just to do airstrikes against ISIL. We're talking about uh, um, uh, ways that we can help Turkey better secure its border. I'm not going to get into specifics, and certainly doesn't involve creating a safe zone. Can I follow up on this? Yeah, please, in the Same back, issues. and that just spread around. I'll get to you. Thank Thomas. you. Yeah. Uh, I think many people are uh, very much uh, uh, surprised that two allies, uh, with Mr. Sinirloğlu, who talks to here maybe every day, daily basis, uh, and he comes out on the record. He says that U.S. and Turkey agreed on a safe zone. This is on the record, not unnamed officials, and then just a couple hours later, you come out and then you basically deny his claim. So this, I think, uh, this is why people are so... Sure, I'm not denying his claims. I frankly haven't seen his remarks. Uh, so um, I'm just trying to speak what our policy and what our understanding is of our agreement uh, reached with Turkey. Yeah, please, let's finish with Turkey, yeah. Would you allow Turkey uh, to attack the PYD the same way they're attacking PKK? If no. the PYD... No, our understanding or, or with Turkey is that they will not attack, and we would not agree to that. Thank you. Please. Um, can I change subjects briefly? Yes. Uh, China moved to sharply devalue its currency. Um, can you tell me what your stance is on that in the sense of negatively affecting U.S. commerce? Has it been raised at some level with the Chinese government? Well, I mean, you know, uh, I would, first of all, um, uh, I'm going to say, you know, I refer you to the Department of Treasury, who obviously watches this issue much more closely uh, and, and with greater expertise <laughs> than uh, certainly I do. But uh, um, uh, so I'm not going to try to speculate uh, on, on this issue beyond saying that we obviously have a strong economic relationship uh, with China. Uh, most recently, we had the uh, strategic and economic dialogue here. Um, and as, frankly, Treasury Secretary uh, Liu uh, has said, uh, we have pressed China uh, to continue financial reforms. And while we want to see additional economic reforms, uh, we believe that are needed, uh, but we, uh, we have seen progress. Uh, and those include commitments by China uh, that were secured at the most recent se um, security and economic dialogue. Um, but, uh, you know, again, I would refer you to Treasury. They closely monitor the situation, and they, they'd but, be able to speak to this issue much better than I can. This one, I think, was the biggest one since maybe 94 or something like that. And it seems that administration after administration, these talks are had at the highest levels, even the, the dialogue you're talking about. And yet, there doesn't seem to be any traction or any, any results as far as them devaluing their currency whenever they want to and negatively affecting U.S., possibly U.S. You know, commerce. Well, again, we've seen them take uh, some what we believe uh, are positive economic reforms. Uh, we want to see continued progress, but I'm going to refer to the Treasury. I'm not going to speak to the broader yeah. issue. Please. Uh, I have some questions in Korea. Uh, yeah. First, uh, Two South Korean soldiers lost their legs when landmines exploded on the border with North Korea, and investigators have determined that uh, North Korea secretly planted these, these landmines on the south side of the border. Uh, what's your reaction to this provocation? Uh, forgive me, that's the first time I'm hearing about that story. Uh, certainly, you know, our condolences and sympathies go to these uh, soldiers uh, who were uh, so grievously injured. Um, I, I would have to look into it a little bit more to find out if indeed DPRK is, uh, is uh, responsible for that, we would obviously condemn it. Okay. My second question sure. is, uh, yeah. there have been some reports that the U.S. has 
ask, ask the Korean President Park Geun-hye not to attend the Chinese uh, war anniversary event. And, and the latest report is that the uh, U.S. asked ask, uh, Korea to send its uh, ambassador to Beijing to attend this event on behalf of the President. No, I can, I can nip that one in the bud. No, we don't. <laughs> we haven't put any pressure on anyone to, in any way, shape, or form on who or, or how they should attend uh, the 70th anniversary. And my last question, my yeah, last please, question yeah, my last question, North Korea created its own time zone uh, called Pyongyang time, which is 30 Sorry, minutes. I'm not. <laughs> Don't have any comment on that? Supposed to have a, more of a poker face. Um, no, no comment. <laughs> please go ahead. Uh, China? Uh, let's go stand North Korea and then we'll move, please. Sorry, uh, there have been reports that um, there's a second hall of centrifuges um, has been discovered and likely operational uh, in the uranium enrichment workshop at North Korea's Yongbyon facility. Uh, have you seen these reports? Have I've not. I'll, I'll look into them. Certainly, you know, uh, you know, it's uh, unfortunately uh, in keeping with uh, uh, with uh, North Korea's uh, continued intransigence on this issue. But are there I don't any, any other comment? To, Please go ahead. I mean, it seems like obviously a lot of the focus is on the Iran deal, but <coughs> have there been more substantial steps to? Uh, work towards denuclearization of? Well, obviously, we've got, uh, you know, a, a number of folks uh, here at the State Department uh, who are working on uh, six-party talks. Uh, um, we want to get those, uh, you know, obviously restarted. Uh, but uh, it's, you know, it's an issue we take very seriously. But I don't have anything to announce at this point. Would you say that, I mean, currently the Iran deal is a, is a much higher priority than working on North Korea? Oh, you know, look, in the, at the Department of State, we need to be able to, uh, what's the expression, walk and chew gum. Uh, you know, n no issue takes precedence. Certainly, we're at an historic moment here with an Iran deal and the potential uh, to really uh, prevent uh, Iran from retaining a nuclear weapon. Uh, so it's a big deal, and we're taking it very seriously, as you've seen the, the Secretary, the President's involvement, everyone, uh, Secretary Moniz, uh, it's a full court press to try to uh, convince the American people that this is the best deal. Uh, but that certainly doesn't... Uh, preclude us uh, uh, taking other issues very seriously, including uh, uh, North, North Korea's behavior. Um, in the way back, and then, yeah, thanks. I want to ask about yeah, yeah. Uh, reports that came out yesterday in the U.S. media um, that were saying that Chinese cyber spies, as they called them, um, had been accessing uh, email accounts of administration officials uh, as, far as, as far back since 2010. Um, is this true? And if so, uh, does this stoke any tensions leading into Xi Jinping's uh, visit in September? Um, you know, I've seen those reports. I don't have anything to really to, to, to comment about them. I, I, I've seen no verification of them. Uh, but, uh, you know, uh, we obviously take cybersecurity very seriously. Uh, this is something that came up in the broader context during the strategic and economic dialogue, um, you know, frankly, because it has such an economic impact. Um, you know, uh, American or Chinese businesses or any international firm needs to be able to operate uh, in a secure cyber environment uh, in order to do business, whether it's in China or the United States or wherever. Um, in terms of the specific uh, allegations, uh, I I'd have to get more information. I don't. Please go ahead, Pat. Venezuela. Sure. President Maduro says that a special Venezuelan commission will be meeting soon with U.S. government officials over allegations um, of what he calls Washington's vulture plan designed to destabilize um, Venezuela's economy. Um, first, are you aware of such a meeting? And then secondly, um, what are your reaction to his allegations? Uh, so first question, we don't, I don't have any, uh, we haven't received an invitation uh, for a meeting uh, with Venezuelan discuss, uh, officials to discuss uh, um, the quote unquote vulture plan. These, but they're false allegations. Look, I mean, we don't, <laughs> we're not promoting unrest in Venezuela. We're not attempting to undermine the Venezuelan economy. Uh, we share strong ties between our people. Uh, we also share one of the longest standing diplomatic relationships uh, in the hemisphere. And we talk to uh, Venezuelan government officials on a regular basis. Yeah, please. Um, last week I asked about Prime Minister Abe's statement uh, on this upcoming Friday. Yep. Uh, there have been reports that Prime Minister Abe will use the words uh, such as aggression, uh, colonial rule, deep remorse, and apology on Friday in his statement, uh, which is consistent with previous prime ministers. Uh, do, do you have any comment on that? I really don't, and I, and, and I, I simply say that, you know, I mean, I, I don't want to get out ahead of uh, before he's even made the statement by press responding to press reports about what he may or may not say. Sorry, follow up on that? Sure, we'll stay in Japan. Thank please. you. Uh, it's about the restarting of a nuclear power plant in yep. southern Japan. 
It's the first restart uh, since the introduction of the new safety regulations after the 2011 uh, Fukushima disaster. Do you have any reaction to this? Uh, just to say, um, you know, we, uh, the restart, you're talking about the Sendi uh, nuclear power plant. Uh, it was a Japanese uh, decision, obviously, as it should be. Um, so I'd refer you to the Japanese government. Um, uh, I mean, we obviously, with Japan, maintain a, uh, a strong dialogue on a range of energy uh, related issues, and, and that includes nuclear safety. Um, but the decision, as I said, to restart the nuclear plant was uh, solely the Japanese government, says it. Are you welcoming or neutral or negative? Neutral. <laughs> Please go ahead. C Cuba, can I? Yeah, yeah. Cuba? Did you ever? Do you have, are you still? You were. Did yeah, we do on, on, on Guantanamo. I'm not sure, Guantanamo. but his Cuba question. Is it Cuba? Is... We could say Cuba and then go to Guantanamo. Sure. <laughs> Sorry, all I, right, I all apologize, right. Ron. Yeah. I should have gotten you next. So. The first three, you know, the basic question. Uh, the, the next coming in a Secretary Kerry's uh, Cuban trip. Yep. Uh, you know, this is also a historical trip over the uh, last 54 years. But as you know, uh, Cuba asked you know, to the United States to lift the U.S. embargo and the return of uh, the U.S. Guantanamo, Guantanamo naval bases, but, um, as you, but as everybody knows, you know Congress opposed both uh, requests. Right. And the normalization is, I know, normalization is a long process. But yes. if the United States cannot satisfy their requirement, <laughs> how can the United States proceed? You know, these normalization process. Uh, what, what is the perspective of these sure. these talks? Geez, you've taken away. You've answered my, all of your <laughs> questions with one of my uh, my proposed uh, answers. That's unfair. Um, no, it's certainly, uh, you're absolutely right. Uh, normalization is a process. We've been very clear about that. Uh, certainly, you know, we'll take another step in that process uh, on Friday uh, with the raising of the flag after 54 years uh, uh, of hiatus. Um, we've been very clear that this doesn't alleviate every challenge in the relationship, uh, but it does give us uh, the ability to uh, speak directly uh, with and to the Cuban government, engage with them more directly. Um, we want to, and we've been very clear about this too, expand ties with the Cuban people, uh, give them greater opportunity, uh, establish greater dialogue with them. Uh, we obviously have a very close relationship with Cuba, uh, despite this 54 years of, uh, uh, of where we didn't have dip diplomatic relations. Um, we want to see the embargo lifted. The Secretary said as much. Uh, that's got to be Congress's decision. But, you know, we've got to take this step by step. And, uh, you know, we're going to we believe that the results will bear out that uh, that we'll see uh, uh, a stronger relationship while again being very clear that you know we're not uh, brushing away concerns about um, civil society or human rights those are all going to remain uh, important challenges uh, that we're going to continue to talk with uh, the Cuban government about could, could you clarify Please. a little bit more uh, Obama a US administration uh, the position on lifting embargo <coughs> Do you believe, you know, uh, Cuban government should uh, take some concrete action in order to lift these sanctions, I mean, the embargo? Well, again, I mean, it's, it's, it's frankly, it's, it's Congress that needs to be, you mm -hmm. know, that needs to take the next steps for in terms of lifting the embargo. So, I mean, you know, apart from lobbying Congress, you know, there's not a whole lot they can do. But, again, we'll continue to make the case. We want to see, you know, as we've said many times uh, since making this decision, uh, you know, stronger trade relations, all of this giving more opportunity to the Cuban people, we think, will, will be in Cuba's and, frankly, the United States' long-term interest. Yeah, please in, go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry, Roger. Right. Thank you for reminding me. Yeah, in terms of uh, the military prison at Guantanamo, which is separate from the naval station, which the Cubans have said they would like returned to their control, what progress is being made within the administration to try to close the prison. There is the Washington Post report indicating that uh, the Department yep. of Justice is resisting efforts to at least move the detainees who can be moved to a federal facility in Illinois. Well, um, you know, we uh, obviously uh, strongly support the secretary, strongly supports uh, um, President Obama's determination. Uh, made from his, the very first day of his administration uh, to close uh, uh, Guantanamo. Um, it, it's obviously a top priority. It has remained a challenge throughout. Mm -hmm. um, we recently uh, named uh, Lee Wolofsky, 
uh, who's the new State Department Special Envoy for Guantanamo uh, closure. And we've frankly dedicated substantial resources uh, uh, to do the diplomatic work necessary uh, to negotiate detainee transfers. I'm not going to specifically talk about one of your questions, which is bringing them to the United States. That's not really in our purview. Uh, but uh, you know, the State Department certainly remains dedicated to the ultimate closure of uh, Guantanamo uh, and um, are taking all possible steps really to um, reduce the detainee population uh, at Guantanamo. Are you able to comment on whether there have been a number of uh, resettlement agreements reached with as many as six other countries in order to relocate those det those detainees who have been cleared for release? And if they have been, if these agreements have been reached, how quickly do you anticipate that they could be approved? I, I don't have anything for you in terms of uh, uh, any agreements we may have for additional uh, detainee transfers, except that we remain hard at work on trying to find those transfers. Is there a sense, and this is my final one, is yeah, there a try. sense that there's a renewed push within the administration to deal with the military prison question because it might then give the U.S. more leverage in long-term negotiations with Cuba over the future of the naval station. I, I wouldn't necessarily uh, characterize it that way. I would just say that we simply remain, you know, this president couldn't have been clearer from day one, as I said, that he wanted to close Guantanamo Bay. Uh, it believes it's in our national security interests uh, and and, uh, and and that remains a huge priority for this administration. Uh, um, this We've talked about this once a couple times before. The, the, same the, question. Hillary, okay. Okay. the Hillary Clinton emails at the lawyer's office. There's just one other question I had about this. Sure. Because I get confused and I apologize. Um, <laughs> it's okay. So, so the, it's you, easy to we've confused. talked about the fact that you have all those emails already. Those are duplicates. Do you, do you also have emails from her top aides that – also had you know accounts on that server. Do you, her top State Department aides, do you have those those emails as well? So those have been. Um, uh, uh, it's a good question, actually. So um, my understanding is those have also been subpoenaed, um, and right, it's uh, like a FOIA or something. Like that. Right, exact. Well, um, again, um, and I'll, I'll clarify this if I get it wrong. Don't worry, I'll. I'll be I'll be told I was wrong, <laughs> and I will I will clarify it. But my understanding is that um, yes, that, that some of these of our close aides uh, who are also part of these uh, or, or uh, were part of the email exchanges uh, have also been asked to uh, comply with uh, with the FOIA request. Right, but if they, what I'm getting at is there's yeah. a, one of their lawyers. There's this kind of this fight between them and Judicial Watch, and one of their lawyers was quoted as saying that, you know, they had been, one of them had been instructed to to delete some of these emails. My my question is, do you already have them? Do you do you have access to those, or, or are the only people who have those emails those aides themselves? Okay. My understanding is that um, some of them have been handed over, but uh, but we don't have access to all of them yet. Okay. So yes. just one. Yeah, please. Again, it's a clarification. You yeah, sure. So, much. Uh, so do you have... Are you go looking for everything that was on the server, or you are going for the emails, or you know? Like no, no, and that's a, that's a that's a common uh, um, misperception. Uh, you know, we received uh, uh, the uh, all of uh, Secretary Clinton's uh, emails, um, and according to the FOIA request, our sole uh, duty or function uh, is to. Uh, go through those and to publicly release them, obviously uh, redacting them where they're where we need to redact them for uh, upgrade their classifications. So that's been our, that's remained our goal uh, and our sole pursuit. It's a, it's a considerable one, um, but um, you know Secretary Clinton handed them over. She said to us that this, this did in fact uh, compile the, the the bulk or the entirety of her, of her uh, correspondence. And as uh, the new regulation is coming in, and as uh, the present uh, administration is using the state.gov, uh, so now everything, uh, you, you feel that everything is in place, like we will not have that missing emails or missing documentation? Well, this is something, you know, um, obviously that uh, we take very seriously, uh, document preservation, um, and we're... No, there's a, there's a, it's a uh, NARA National Archives, 
has right. No, the, I understand what you're saying. What you're asking that, in terms the, of the, what right in the, the use of 2016, so, 2019. So these this are is, the deadlines. Right. So this is. Wait. I'm sorry. What was it? These what? are the deadlines for the administration to put everything in the. Ah. Okay. I understand what you're asking. Then. Yeah. I mean, you know, we spoke about it last month. I guess was yeah, the, yeah. last week was the the release of that month's tranche. Uh, we fell a little short. We're making uh, every effort to uh, catch up. Uh, we expect we'll do so. Um, and our, our, you know, our uh, goal is to meet uh, the, all of the deadlines, yes, going forward. Yes, please. Please, I'm, go ahead, sir. I'm just going back to Ro's question about Guantanamo yeah, Bay sure. and the detainees. Yep. Without talking about the policy or the fate of the detainees, what is exactly, can you clarify the role of the State Department in this process? In, in Guantanamo. Well, yes, uh, I mean, yeah, I mean, without being involved in the Department of Justice or other things. Sure. What is the role of the? Well, as I said, State we have Department? a we have a, a, um, a special envoy for Guantanamo closure, um, and uh, um, you know, part of this is as I, as as I just mentioned is, and it's a fairly big part of this is you know as these uh, individuals uh, are cleared for um, release or resettlement. Mm -hmm. um, you know, is, is working out arrangements with partners, allies around the world uh, to resettle these uh, these detainees. So the State Department play that role. What's that? The State Department play that role. In That's right. Okay. Please. All right. Um, on Japan, the Japanese uh, economy minister uh, Akira Mari he posted on his blog that uh, he was uh, surprised that the U.S. lacked its usual stubborn persistence at the uh, latest TPP meetings. Um, and he expressed concern it's an about offhand com um, compliment or something backhanded. <laughs> well, he expressed a concern that um, there would be a decrease in motivation in, uh, in completing the TPP negotiations. I, I mean, without parsing his words, um, you know, I think everyone wants to see uh, us reach an agreement on TPP. We've been hard at work on this for many years now. Um, we didn't get there, uh, but we did, uh, you know, make some progress, and we expect to get there. We expect to get this over the finish line. Uh, how much efforts are you taking to ensure that, you know, momentum is kept up? Are you talking about I'd refer uh, you to Sure, I'm sorry, I interrupted you. Well, about, you know, um, the next step in the negotiations. I'm not sure when the next uh, meetings will take place, uh, but uh, that I would refer you to USTR for the next steps. Is that it, guys? Thank you. Thank you.